Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be, and whether you're watching live or archived, and welcome to episode number 64 of Nontel Transmission Talk Tuesdays. Took a couple of weeks off, so don't blame me if I'm a little rusty. Of course, then again, how would you know the difference? I'm Jeff. I'm here to help you out a little today. As always, we try to find somebody smarter than me to talk about, and this week we found a couple of somebodies. Not really a big challenge. Talking about what to do when stuff goes sideways, specifically looking at backing up systems in such a way that, uh, say you get a ransomware attack, as an example, how do you recover from that? And uh, there's been a lot more of them than you know about, uh, only the bigger ones make the news, but there have been a lot of them happening. So to talk about that a little, we've got a couple of friends with us. We've got Nate Mumford, who you may re recognize. He's been with us before. He's the Director of Sales Engineering for RCS. Welcome, Nate. Glad to have you back. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Sunshine Buttercups, man. Couldn't be better. I've been better, but it costs more. And also with me, oh, Marco says uh, the best solution for uh, handling a, a ransomware is grab a bottle of whiskey and deal with it tomorrow. Not saying you're wrong, Marco. Um, but also with us, we've got Jeff Sigler, seal sale, or senior sales engineer for RCS. You couldn't have made that a little more of a tongue twister, could you? <laughs> it was a challenge to come up with something that was tough to say. <laughs> so we've we've been debating what we call uh, what we call me and uh, other Jeff because you know the, when we were doing the pre-show emails, it was uh, Jeff, other Jeff, and not Jeff was how we <laughs> identified the three of us. Uh, but uh, so Mr. Ziegler, uh, you've been with uh, you've been with RCS for a while now. Yeah, it's been a little bit, 26 years. <laughs> there you go. A little bit. So, you know, I, I hit, uh, let's see, what year is this? This is 2022, right? So, yeah, I hit uh, 32 years come October. So, nice. it's the same basic ball. And then Nate, he's the, the young guy in the crowd. Yeah, only, only like seven years, right? Only seven years. Yeah, well, you know, in, in radio years, that makes you a, a mere stripling, so to speak. It's true. That is yeah, true. So, of COVID years. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that is true also. <laughs> So before we really get rolling on this, we'll do the mandatory housekeeping stuff. Uh, we try to make these as interactive as possible. So by all means, if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, sarcasm, snark, any of the above, then uh, type it into the little question for staff button in your control panel or that little window and uh, hit the little send button. It'll pop up on my screen as, as Marco's comment about the whiskey. And, uh, Okay, we'll carry on from there. We'll make it part, if it's uh, printable or repeatable, if I can read it out loud, then we'll make it part of the conversation. Otherwise, I may editorially, you know, I may, I may not either. It uh, kind of totally goes everywhere some days. Uh, <laughs> also, if you've got a microphone and you're not shy, feel free to hit the little hand raisey icon. I'll uh, occasionally get somebody hit that by mistake, but uh, certainly if you hit that, then I find a point in the, when I actually see it, sometimes it'll go away before I do. But uh, when I see it, I'll uh, unmute you and make you part of the conversation that way as well. Also, if you're an SBE member and you've got a certification level, remember that the uh, completion of one of our webinars does qualify for half of a recertification credit under Schedule I. So make it a point to jot that down in whatever form you keep track of that sort of stuff. I have a notepad beside me, which, Occasionally, I remember to scribble stuff in. Usually, then I've got to remember where I put the notepad. But uh, definitely keep track of that. If you're not an SBE member, why not? There's definitely some benefit. And if you are a member, Member Plus, uh, I think that's what they call it, the one where you get to watch all the webinars as part of your membership fee. So definitely worth the... I, I don't know what to call it. I do know I have it. So <laughs> that's all I can tell you. <laughs> so... We did get a few advanced questions. Uh, one or two of them, I, I, the, the names have been redacted to uh, protect the innocent. We'll cover that in a second. But uh, the basic theory of today, that the basic, and, and as always, of course, we'll t these are what I really wanted to talk about, but it doesn't really limit us because as soon as we cook off this slide, I'll have forgotten what we talked about here. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, you guys have done a lot with Zeta in the cloud. And so this is, uh, I'm using some slides that Nate provided as the actual content today. I didn't bother adding anything to it because you did a pretty good job of hitting me with the talking points. <laughs> but uh, even though we're talking uh, Zeta specifically, because, well, of course, you all are wearing RCS shirts, uh, 
the stuff we're talking about will work for a lot of things. Isn't that right, Mr. Ziegler? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the the I guess the logic flow or workflow of of making sure you're covered under a lot of contingencies it kind of applies to not only automation, uh, any of the components in your broadcast and uh, life really you can bring into here if, if it's everything from your traffic so software, your user scheduling, scheduling, whatever it is, it all falls under. Yeah, and I mean, that's something that I see Dai's uh, sort of prompting in the background, telling me uh, telling me what to remember to talk about. So uh, and, and <laughs> Dai, Dai's the one that everybody answers to, so, you know, but, uh, you know, we're talking about, and I mean, you guys are, are doing a demo on this on the NAB show floor, and I know we're grabbing one of, or several of your streams of audio for our yeah. uh, for some of our demos, which I won't talk about today, but I hope to be talking about either next week or the week after. Absolutely. So uh, stay tuned for that too. There might be some sneak previews to NAB for the folks that can't get to it, and uh, it might be a surprise for those folks. But uh, one of the big deals, and I beat this drum a lot is that uh, if you've got a backup system and it's connected to your network and you get infected with ransomware, that backup just became useless. So Nate, can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, and, and by the way, you, you put a great point when you say backups, right? So one of the things that we do for RCS Lives every Thursday is the first thing we kick it off is reminding users to check their backups. And that's in itself a little bit of a loaded sentiment, right? Because you have the actual physical backup, but then you also have the backup path, or you have, let's say, a automatic workflow where you take that backup and move it to another third-party location, right? When you say backups, why are they important? Or check your backups. It's not just say, oh, I have something there, I'm good. It's the entire backup air chain, right? It's making sure that we say check your backups making sure you have access to that path. I've had some users in the past had a USB drive and they unplugged it. It was a D, plugged it back in, Windows moved it to an E. Well, now your software is not gonna be tied to that, that drive, right? Mm -hmm. So again, when you talk about backups, why they're important, it's also backups and the backup path, the chain, all of that is super, super yeah. important. And as you said, you know, there's so many different types of disasters these days. There's natural disasters that we say, fire, flood and all that. There's some unique examples which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And there's cryptoware. And the whole idea here is, remember, this is the first time I said it, it's my, my, one of my cliches, you get health insurance when, before you break a leg or after you break a leg, right? You always get insurance before you break a leg as well. Yeah. Uh, now guaranteed, if you do break the leg, you'll be getting the insurance after if you didn't have it before for the next time you break a leg. But you know, that's uh, one of those uh, barn doors and horse type scenarios. Oh. Uh, you made a really good point, though, and for those of us who are, are stuck in the hardware days when, you know, things were actually physical things that we touched, it's like the drum we always beat when you've got backup power, you don't just run your generator, you run it under load, and you do that by pulling the main breaker and simulating, exercising the transfer switch, checking the infrastructure, the path between the generator and the building. And this is no different. Uh, having a backup is a wonderful thing, but if you don't test it on a regular basis to ensure that both the backup and whatever connects it to your system are functional, then you uh, you end up being in a position where you're kind of SOL, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, you can apply your own definition to that acronym. But uh, and by the way, that's it, one of the things that we do for our RCS cloud-based disaster recovery is that we offer some of those maintenance hours into your contract because the idea is you're absolutely right. You want to make sure that you're not getting disaster every single month. Hopefully, you're not getting disaster every month. But the idea is you want to make sure it's up and running and working. So that's part of it too. Right. So that's a very important point. Well, and one of the things that, and this is something that sort of comes as an, an example where if you were running offsite uh, hosting, whether it's, uh, and Zeta in the cloud would be a prime example, say I'm hosting it on, I don't know, Amazon Web Services or Microsoft or, 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 or any offsite host. If I lose the STL because I was connected by fiber and uh, I lost the connection because a backhoe cut the fiber into the transmitter building, if my web-based connection is not over a different ISP or over a air link or, or, or again, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, if you're running the two of them over the same path, then that physical disruption is going to interfere with both. 
So this is where, and I beat this drum a lot about uh, mapping, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got to map your system. You've got to know what goes where and uh, how it connects. And uh, Jeff, this must be something that you deal with a lot because you do a lot of uh, sales engineering. So you, yeah. you probably could speak to that much better than I could. <laughs> well, I don't know about any better, but I, I, I would like to add, and you know, we, we generically use the term backups, but in reality, there's all kinds of different backups you do. and and, and the implication is very broad now you've got with AOIP, you know, you're talking your entire plant now that, that you have configurations to back up that should something happen that you need to restore. Otherwise you start building again from manual, you know, from scratch. And, you know, one of the things, and Nate tied into it, but didn't say the word, a lot of times your nightly backups that automatically reference a path that's already stored, a lot of times those are just incremental backups. Mm -hmm. And that, Fine and dandy, and definitely a part of the whole backup picture, but an incremental backup isn't an end-all game, you know, uh, uh, backup plan, if you will. That's that that's right. great. It covers me for some immediate needs and such. But if I need to restore from scratch, I need a full backup, and right. so it's the balance of those two components. And that's one of the things that Zeta the uh, Cloud we tried to incorporate in with to allow you to deal with both the incremental as well as a full backup plan because both of both of those types of backups are 100% valid and 100% should be a part of mm -hmm. a part of your plan for how do I get how do I make sure that all my bases are covered now for anybody who didn't grow up messing with clipper summer 87 database structures uh, which is what the Nautel in-house customer management system was written in when I started um, and it was really cool because, you know, anybody with a uh, DOS editor could go in and tweak it to uh, as, as things changed. But for anybody who isn't uh, schooled in database theory, an incremental backup is basically anything that's changed since my last backup, whether it was incremental or full. A full backup is I'm backing up everything, the entire database, all the contents, all everything. So ideally what you should do and it will your schedule will vary depending on the complexity of your system but you will set up a schedule for both full and because you can't just do a full backup and then do incremental backups from then on forever because trying to hit a restore point would after a couple of months be, be for all intents it'd be impossible so ideally what i tell folks is and i mean what we shoot for in in my little areas is uh pull back up every month and incrementals at least once a week. And if you do a lot of cycling of your playlist rotation, you may do incrementals every couple of days. Again, it's going to be determined by your schedule. If you're a little more free form, yeah, I mean, again, you're going to change it quite a bit. I've got a question from the call, and Joseph makes a good point too, and we'll hit that in a second, but... Uh, I got to scroll up. Things are coming in faster than I can speak. Um, so Asa asked, do Zeta and GS have automated backup functions built in now? When they installed, the engineer had to create a Windows scheduled process to clone the library to an external drive, and G Selector just prompts the user each time they exit. So yeah. is, is that an automated system now? Yes, uh, it's a little bit of a dated question, just so you know. So yes, we've had the automated backups in there. In fact, one of the things we're introducing in G Selector because Zeta has all those backups already. That's already in there. Um, in specific to G Selector, we actually are going to incorporate, we have this process called jobs, right? What's a job? It's an automated task that we can assign. So like a service heartbeat to the server, we have that as a job. We also, coming up soon, is a data exchange job. So if you're like me, what I did is I essentially had traditional backups you know, every day during the overnight. And then I would do, after music changes, on Tuesdays and Fridays, I would send myself a data exchange, which is our music scheduling cloud backup for G Selector. And by the way, we do have a data exchange recovery console. So what we do is we take your call letters and the most recent set of calls after seven days it expires, we take a copy of that and we save it in our cloud server. And the purpose of that is if you ever have an issue, again, think of cryptoware, we have your entire backup as long as you sent it to somebody, including yourself, is there and we can restore it. So I've had my, my favorite stories is when I was working in support, somebody called in, their cat peed on their laptop, fried the laptop, and that was their database. <laughs> well, guess what? They, the day before they sent themselves a data exchange and we recovered it, 
totally fine. No harm, no foul. So, yes, no, except for the laptop. But... <laughs> yeah. We do automated backups and the future with jobs. Yeah. All right. It's a great so, story. I, I've been working tech support off and on for 30, almost 32 years now. I don't think I've ever had, now I've had mice, I've had rats, but that's the first time I've ever, oh, wait, no, I did have one transmitter that dog peed on it. And I'm not Eight? sure whether that was a, uh, you know, maybe it was a comment of some sort. Um, <laughs> now, Joseph makes a good point, and this kind of ties into what you were saying, Nate, that uh, differential backups are an option too. And what's the difference mm -hmm. between a differential and an incremental? And uh, I'll, I'll throw that question out to either of you, because to be honest, I don't know. Ziggler, you want to handle that? Well, I, I, I really think uh, as far as I, I, I am knowledge, I guess, an incremental one is it's just truly a stacking one where, hey, I am going to every day, I'm, here's the changes for the day. A differential backup is now a defined point. So if I want to say, I want it, the changes from a range. So it's, it's, it's think of it as a larger chunks. That's my, been my experience with a differential backup or where you compare say, all right, tell me what the difference is from, from this point to that point. It's just a, it's, it's a larger step point, really. It's same, same okay. idea, just scalable step point. And if right. I could elaborate on some of the G selector side of things. So G selector has for your data exchanges, a current data and a station backup. Uh, current data is your entire enterprise, where a station is just that one station backup. So for me, you right. might do something like Mondays and Fridays or Mondays and Thursdays, you do a current data, and then maybe like at two o'clock every day, you do a station backup. That's one thing you can do. We can always right. restore your station backups from a current data backup. That's important to note. But then, of course, when you talk about Zeta, you know, one of the things we talk about these backups is we also got to talk about the audio portion of this, right? because that's also coming into play as well. And so one of the things that we'll talk about for RCS Cloud is when we talk about a true disaster recovery, we're taking that SQL backup to the cloud, but we're also taking your audio as well. So you can restore that backup. Think as the reverse aspect here, right? So what is important that you need for those backups? In G Selector, it's metadata, so the data exchanges work perfectly. Um, for Zeta, the SQL backups are there for all of your data and your schedules and all of that, but you still need the audio. So just be aware, we talk about these backups. It's really what you're trying to back up. And going back to the intermediate aspect, if you're doing, let's say, a lot of changes on a big market, you know, at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday versus 4 p.m. on a Tuesday, that's a very different environment for your yeah. radio station. So if you know that you've had an issue where you're like, hey, I need to have those changes from those six hours because there's enough change in my environment, that's telling yourself that you need to have more intermediate backups. Right. Oh, and a couple of folks have uh, chimed in to let us know the differential is everything that's changed since the last full backup and incremental is just, of course, since the last backup of either kind. Right. So, it's, it's the same idea, just bigger step. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, um, let's see, Mark mentions that they use local cloud backups and also a replicator server. And, and that's something worth mentioning just because when, and I tell the story a lot, when I started at Nautel, we had uh, two PCs, an 8088 and an 8086. They were connected by a piece of RG213 with coax connectors and they were running Lantastic. And that was the company network. And everything was lovely, it all ran on DOS, life was grand. And then Windows came along and then Novell Network came along and then we graduated to, to big full-time servers and then we graduated from there to mirrored arrays where one server was doing all the working, the other one is in the background just keeping itself constant with the first server. And if the main one crashed, the, back, the other one picked up. The challenge was, of course, that as we said, they're both physically connected at all times and these days, in, in that type of scenario, when you get malware or ransomware on the first one, you pretty much automatically infected the second one. And that's why, and Chris Hayes mentions, the it's important to have an off-premise copy in case you lose the building, fire, flood, insurrection. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, you're off, you need an off-premise copy that is not physically connected to the network. And uh, that's where the isolation comes in. And this is where cloud-basing stuff is, is uh, beneficial because then you, yeah, exactly. you know, that the connection is subscription-based. It's only there when you tell it to be. If I've got that right, and again, this is why I get people like you guys who are smarter than me to talk about this stuff, so I don't make myself look too foolish. Yeah, 
And that's the beauty of Zeta Cloud, um, RCS Cloud Based Asset Recovery, is the idea that you're taking that backup, that audio, your schedules, your metadata, and you're restoring it or you have it saved in the cloud, as well as a playout system that you already have pre configured as well. And so we'll talk about this in just a little bit, but we'll show the workflow in the sense that, you know, you can go from your phone and enable something that gives your team a chance to assess situation, unplug those computers, but know that you have everything is currently running as is from the second you left it uh, up in the cloud. And we, of course, follow Amazon Web Services, best practices and securities and all of that. So there's another next level of security there as well. Plus talking about audio formats, Windows versus Linux. There's a lot of benefits to talking about, you know, uh, having your your stuff in the RCS cloud. Yeah, and uh, talking, uh, John makes another good point about differential versus uh, incremental. If you are trying to restore a database with incrementals because it's been much longer than it should have been since you did your last full backup, then you've got to do the full backup, then the net first incremental, then the next incremental, right. then the next <laughs> incremental, and it's going to. So if you've got a differential right. backup. Yeah it speeds up the whole process. And again, this is where, like I say, once, and depending on your own specific system and, uh, and uh, setup, the schedule is going to vary. But once every so often, you should do a new full backup, just basically set a new restore point for everything. Um, let's see, Ace has got another question about, so in G Selector, I can make it do that sync to your cloud automatically behind the scenes and take away the prompt to the user to do it manually. And uh, I'll provide you with Ace's contact information after, so uh, so yeah, Jeff perfect. can reach out and uh, you can sort that stuff out uh, because that that's almost user specific. But but so you do have the ability now to automate almost yep. all that stuff, right? Right now, the manual process is just do file, send database, okay. But coming on the pipeline, it will be all automated. So you can say every day at two p.m. send a data exchange from this email account. Mm -hmm. So Ray is asking how hard it is for non-IT folks to implement hardware firewalls like Cisco. And uh, Ray, the best way to answer that is depends. Um, well, because I mean, the, the Cisco firewall course is a one month long course. I mean, it's not a trivial thing if you wanna dive hard all the way into it. But if you want to do a basic off the shelf setup, you can probably make it work. I mean, there there are a lot of prefab units out there. I mean, and and if you go back, uh, Ray, last month we talked uh, about firewalls in one of the uh, sessions. I forget which one. We we did last month was IT month. Uh, and remember, I'm an RF guy, so talking about bits and bytes that that's a hard pill for me to swallow. Some days, I like to joke I got out of customer service when I spent more time setting IP addresses than I did troubleshooting power amplifiers. But uh, here I am, 15 years later, spending more time talking about IP addresses than I ever have about power amplifiers. So there you go. All right, moving forward, let's get to the audience questions. So we've been rolling along for 25 minutes now, and we haven't even gotten off the contents page. I told you this would happen. I warned you ahead of They're time. Questions. Great questions. Yeah. Um, let's see. So there you go. And uh, John mentions a, a good point, too, that if you want to put in a Cisco firewall, you're probably best to get a Cisco trained engineer to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, but at the same token, you know, if I want somebody to work on a transmitter, I'd like to know they had some transmitter training. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely something to uh, to do. And, and by the way, just um, to finish that question, too, by the way, if you have any any RCS products, we have exceptions and listed and all that stuff. You can always call support. We'll help you on that stage of, you know, we always like to say we work in your environment. But if you're like, yeah. hey, I just this Cisco router, I need to set up some exceptions for Zeta or G Selector. We have those call support. We'll help you out. Yeah, yep. it's money. It's money wisely spent to to bring in somebody who's an expert in doing the setup right. for your firewalls. Yeah. So Dive's feeding us questions now. She says, "What happens when your internet goes down from the transmitter site? What's what's the Nautel backup?" And, and mine is basically now. And number one, at our particular site, we are holding our life and limb on that one little piece of fiber, and and we're running audio over USB on the transmitter as our primary. Uh, we've also got a barracks box, box, barracks, I think it's a barracks what we're running at the moment. Sorry to uh, the folks that uh, have other options, but it's what we had. Anyway, um, so we can run USB into that and do a playlist out of that as well. So local backup and, and yeah. 
but having said that, there's no reason we, well, in our case, we've got a big honk and ridge that says there is a reason we can't run a wireless IP link. But for a lot of cases, you could run a wireless IP link. The big thing to remember, and, and this is why I caution people, if you're using Bug Tussle Wireless as an example, and, and that is a real I, IT company for what it's worth, a cell company, but anyway, if you were using them as your uh, backup provider, make sure that they're not running on the Comcast cable that is your primary service. Because a lot of the uh, second tier providers will lease uh, infrastructure from the, the majors. And so definitely you do have to pay attention for that. Um, uh, wow, Dice having way too much fun in the questions. Okay, we shouldn't have told her about that page. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how do we feel about 5G as backup? and? Uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll let you guys address it, but for me, if you're using prioritized LTE, you can pretty much run. You're going to pay through the nose for the data at some point. But like uh, I've had Josh Bone on before talking about his Max Connect, which uses prioritized LTE. So it's uh, it's ranked right underneath first responders in the priority list, which means he'll be able to make a connection when your cell service is down. You know, assuming that the actual cell site is functional. Yeah, it's the tower you're standing. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, so, yeah, I don't have an issue with 5G as a backup, understanding that in some emergencies, cell service is going to be dramatically impaired. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, Wi-Fi bridges because you can get them for a couple of grand, including dishes, assuming you've got a point to point. And again, situational. You know, every site is going to be a little bit different. Yeah. So we got our advanced questions. Uh, that the first one, uh, uh, thanks, Curtis. Um, inside out, upside down, sideways or backwards, doesn't matter much. You better have a plan in place. Um, you better have a document map knowing or a map knowing exactly what your network is, what it does, what's connected where. Because that way you can point to anything on that map, say, this fails, what do I need to do to get around it? Um, Safe to vacuum the transmitter cabinet with a shop vac while the transmitter is on. No, just no. And now I'll quantify that. Uh, it depends if you're if you've got a six foot outside. tall rack and you're just doing like the cleaning the dead bugs off the floor in the front of it. Yeah, whatever, not a problem. If you're going to start removing panels and try to clean power supplies and amplifiers, highly not recommended. Just don't go there. All right, and off air, so audio goes silent. So that's pretty much our, our whole topic of conversation once we actually get to it. And let's start with, uh, and, and we'll look at Zeta, but again, I wanna reiterate, you know, you guys, of course, got the RCS shirts on and we're, we're talking Zeta because it's what you know, but this can work with a lot of different scenarios. So, you know, just if you're running, goodness gracious, not Zeta, then uh, make sure that uh, you do understand that a lot of this philosophy could work that in that regard as well. So run me through the circle here. You're sitting there, you're at your computer, you're surfing, whatever. Yeah, you're doing your everyday surf. workflow. And, and to take it a step back too, you know, don't forget, it's a really important note from here at RCS that, you know, you look at Zeta and you have something like Zeta to go, right? That's been in existence for years. And the idea that we have remote capabilities. And what we found years ago was that we also need to scale up to the cloud. And so it's important to note that when we talk about RCS cloud-based disaster recovery, this is an all-in-one cloud solution. It's also part of the RCS and the Z environment as well. Whereas, you know, we've seen some other cloud, you know, uh, cloud scenarios where they kind of pick and piece things together and kind of, you know, use a bunch of different products to kind of get you from the entire start to finish. And with RCS cloud, we're kind of doing that all in one in the RCS world. So that's important to note because again, when you look at some like, you know, uh, Zeta to go that we're just expanding on that. And we already had the foundation here for RCS cloud. You know, we're really, really, uh, adding features to this uh, this environment. So what we have here is kind of a one, two, three, four, five. This is your every day and how it applies to RCS cloud-based disaster recovery. So at number one, the left-hand side, that's you just creating audio, voice tracking. Everything you do in the Z environment is automatically replicated to RCS cloud. At that point in time, it's there. It's running in the background. We have your logs, we have your audio. If you add a, a new song that's sent automatically to RCS Cloud via site replication, that is a Zeta service by the way that runs on usually the typically the Zeta file server. 
And then, of course, either it's like as small as like I change a chain type from, let's say, segue to stop. That's a change to the log, the log environment. We send that up to RCS Cloud. And now we have number three, disaster strikes, right? Whatever that may be. Again, natural disasters, fire or floods, or cryptoware, which is also there as well. Um, but we also have some very unique scenarios. Um, we had one of our clients had a, an issue where there was, I'll just, just say there was police activity outside of their studios, and it was cut off for about a week and a half. And they had to kind of scramble through. And so for the first 24 hours, their team wasn't allowed back in the building. After that, they got approved by the government to kind of send in the engineers to get some makeshift things going and all of that. But, you know, they were operating from RCS Cloud because they can do that remotely, right, through any type of URL. And that's also important to note as well. When we look at number four, enabling the RCS Cloud, we're doing that from it's a true URL. Security purposes, you have your own username and password with a two-factor authentication through Okta. So security is there as well. And then, so you go to your phone, you go to your tablet, you go to Chrome, Firefox, uh, Mac, Apple. It's a true URL. Sign in, enable the cloud. You can operate from there. You can voice track from there. You can change the logs from there as well. And so you can see there's different types of, uh, of you know, these disasters, right? So again, physical or something more of like a cryptoware. And then number five, when we're all ready to go, we restore your database and we have your audio is in the cloud. We actually restore it by the schedule. So let's just say you, you know, restart your Zeta system at 2 p.m. We'll start with the schedule at 2 p.m. and restore the audio from there. Um, that also includes your SQL backups that will have your GPO mappings in there. And then of course your audio in there as well. When you're ready, simply just, you know, turn off RCS cloud from the sequence you're playing and you just reoperate again from your uh, everyday RCS system and we go back to one again. So it's a very powerful, it's a very automatic um, environment and disaster recovery solution, but it's also very flexible depending on you interpret that. And I always say for me personally, if you're an engineer or an IT person, you know that when something bad happens, the best thing you can do is that, that little second pause of, okay, what do I need to do? And that breath is so important because it's, you're not frantically trying to find the solution, you're actively solving that solution. But when you have a traffic director and a PD and an OM behind you saying, we missed a spot block and we're a seven station clusters and oh my God, that's $1,000. How are you gonna make it back? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna unplug my machines. I'm gonna go on my phone. I'm gonna start RCS Cloud. And now we can start to resolve that situation without affecting any of the product and you know the spot blocks and commercial, all of that revenue. So question number one, because of course yep. you, you talk and I sit here thinking about things that I should be actually listening instead of, um, oh, anyway, great. I love um, so I'm sitting in the studio and uh, automation systems up and I grab the USB stick that I brought that I thought had an MP3 file on it to plug it in. And now I've just downloaded ransomware onto the automation computer. How do you prevent that from being uploaded to, to Zeta Cloud? So typically it's also in the file form it plays a big important role on here, right? And so we have Zeta Subrecation that, that sends that file across. We have the, uh, the best practices and securities, as I said, with our own containers on Amazon to flag that. Um, depending on what it is, it's different operating systems as well versus Windows versus Linux. Uh, Linux, sorry. Um, and um, I'm trying to think what else we have in place there. Again, it's all about the hoops you're jumping through, right? The easier yeah. the hoops, the more the attacks that happen. The more hoops you have to jump through, the harder it is to get attacked there. You know, mm -hmm. one of the, I think, Nate, you alluded to it earlier, one of the benefits, if you will, of, of being in the cloud is that it kind of, I guess it doesn't force you, but it's a smart move to move to a Linux platform. And so all of our cloud work is on a Linux platform and um, using containers, you know, in the Amazon domain. And uh, we, there is no direct connect between the Zeta. We have basically send messages saying, hey, I've got a new song for you. Here's the data for it. Here's the audio for it. If it's not packaged right, the cloud's not accepting it, and that's not going to make it to the cloud. Good, good. So, and that yeah. uh, kind of ties into the, the next question that came in. Database and control interface for application is one thing, but how do you get the live audio from the cloud to the transmitter if all the computers in the plant are dead? Yep. And that's where a cloud-based scenario in, in a virtualized uh, situation works because uh, the computer that we're writing on is not in the, in the plant. 
correct? Mm -hmm. So how and, do you now, but that does bring back the question, how do you get the audio from the cloud to the transmitter? I mean, you still and, need a network connection. Yeah, very simply put, we have an RCS cloud. Every station has its own encoder. So as you would traditionally broadcast to your internet stream, it's the same exact thing, but Zeta has it built in in the RCS cloud, which we have a slide later coming up, we'll show you. And yeah. so essentially what you do is you predetermine what that URL output, I and mean, we've heard some transmitters these days have secondary URLs. We've had um, one of the really unique circumstances, I had one engineer had a deal with his competitor. They both had a single studio in both of their environments. If there's any issues, they were allowed to essentially go to that one room and continue to broadcast, which was great. And he asked, well, what's stopping me from putting this on like a barracks box, feeding that one pot to the board, and then having that entire board go out to the, the transmitter site? Absolutely, mm -hmm. you can do that, right? It's how you interpret that. But we give you that URL to how wherever you want to go and push that to, you can do that. Again, that's how we do these things now. And we continue to test while there's there. So when disaster does strike, you know everything is working. You just hit a button and you're back online. And I, I guess the, the big point is that at that at that point, it, it doesn't really matter where you're physically located. Um, and and John brings this up, uh, that uh, the question being about live announcers that would normally have been in the studio, but there wouldn't be anybody or stop anybody from being home on their own laptop or on a station laptop or whatever in a totally dis different place being able to upload their content to the yeah to the cloud server and then download it direct to the transmitter. Yeah, there, there's short form content, there's long form content. Think news talk, morning shows, think of just voice tracking. We have voice tracking inside of RCS Cloud. So for example, if you're a news reporter and there's a flood somewhere and you're out on the scene, you wanna go and do a quick little break about being there, absolutely voice track. It's super, super quick and easy. It's saved automatically, it's there. If you're doing a morning yeah. show, long form content, we have some enabled features in there too. Uh, Revma, which is our content delivery network, has what we call a conference app, which essentially is a virtual studio. You tie that into your RCS cloud and then boom, you go live. So it's a, a virtual studio with its own URL. You invite users into there and then we connect the two. Again, that's the Revma conference app into RCS cloud and you can go uh, through that way. But there's other methods as well to get your know, long form content in there. Yeah, and that kind of ties into something. And I, I so at, at this point, if, if I go silent, it's because uh, John in the background heard me say this and said, "You're not supposed to talk about that," and killed our connection. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he's got that level of control. I'll get a nasty email after. But uh, one of the things we've been playing with, uh, you guys are running a course. You're, you're going to be running uh, Zeta in the cloud at mm -hmm. uh, NAB, and uh, we're cabbage or cabbaging on to several of your uh, audio signals in the in the process to feed our HD demo, mm -hmm. and uh, and we've got the ability with the HD multicast, we've got the processor power to put a virtual container of Zeta in the cloud directly into the HD multicast, so we can suck the audio downstream it out. We could feed the uh, the live feed in from a microphone wherever, um, you know, you, you yeah. The, again, I where you it. are. Yeah. We're not tied to a physical infrastructure anymore. Yeah. And by the way, um, that station I built for you, I spun it up in about 30 seconds, tied it to a GCN yeah. database, got some music put up there. Of course, that is, remember, I was, I was jokingly saying, I know there's engineers out there who are like, uh, this sounds interesting. And I always say, just be aware, phase one of RCS Cloud is disaster recovery. Phase two is the RCS Cloud. So what we're doing now with time is we're blending that that workflow together. So yes, that is coming down the pipeline, but right now we're talking about disaster recovery. Yeah, we're, our intentions are not to, to, with DR, to indefinitely run from the cloud. We want to get you through the disaster and get you back into your normal environment. Right, and I mean, this is one of those things, this comes back all the way to, I forget what year, I want to say 2010, but I'm I'm throwing a dart at a board and time becomes very fluid after a certain age. Yeah, so uh, you know it's it's all subjective, but uh, it, it all comes back to once we started transporting audio in a digital domain, then at that point the the amount of flexibility became pretty much limited by the imagination, mm -hmm. you know, and where you go now. And, and Ace is asking, so what uh, transport do you use for a public internet AOIP link? Are you talking MP3 or AIF like a Telesipstream does? 
and mentioned, and they use Livewire and Dante for everything in-house. So, so okay, so we're running audio. Are we running pure data or are we running audio? Do I need an instance of SATA on both ends to translate? How, how do I work this? Yeah, so imagine you have your traditional Zeta, right? That's going to run as is, your traditional radio setup. We use, again, Zeta set replication as a service. That's going to take everything replicated up into the cloud. You can also do linear as well. It's part of the beauty of set replication is that you have multiple sites that need the exact identical data. But what we do here is we just put it vertical versus linear up into RCS cloud. And then you have the URL. Uh, you have that encoder built in. So uh, format outputs, we have AAC, uh, OGG, Opus, MP3, FLAC, uh, PCM Wave, and AAC, or those are output functionalities. And of course, those bit rates range from like 32 to 968, depending on what you're using and, and everything in between. So it depends on how you wanna, how you wanna broadcast, right? Um, and the beauty is, is that it's a one-to-one -one destination, right? You have your single Zeta station encoder going to the output destination. You're not having like the traditional streaming numbers, which is, you know, 1,300 listeners at any given time. It's a one-to-one. -one. So you're not really paying for that bandwidth, so to speak. Use something like Revma as your content delivery network to get that restreams from there too. So a lot of different options there in regards to output. Okay, uh, I'm going to flip through. You've got a couple of configuration screens that you sent me, so we'll, we'll flip through them. And then I got a, a couple of questions, uh, and, and Mr. Ziegler, I'm going to be putting you on the spot in a moment or two, also, because it just seems like you've been sitting there so quiet. Get a word in. Too long. Nate, Nate wow. kind of takes over the microphone. That's right. He's very good at his job, and, <laughs> and I miss one. I didn't miss so. one. Okay, good. So, what are we looking at here? So this is just an example of RCS Cloud. Everything is module-based. So I have a layout with essentially three modules open. The very top, I have my on-air. Bottom left, I have my playlist. And I actually, uh, you can choose where you want to have empty voice track positions or just create one on the fly yourself. So what I did here is just created a transition. I uh, made that voice track on the bottom right-hand side. Well, thank you for uh, uh, picking up songs that I actually recognize, too. <laughs> Oh, and the classic rock station for you. <laughs> so from there, you, uh, you, you've you got uh, a couple of different things, but uh, what are we looking at now? Example of the metadata card, the song properties window. I wanted to show the marks here so you can see you can upload a piece of audio, do the trim in, trim out. You do the intro time, the segue here. Just an example of some of the properties you can do in uh, adding a song to RCS Cloud. Okay. And so again, this is all electronically done i mean i say electronically done i, I mean yeah. me i use chrome on my windows you can use an apple tablet if you wanted to yep it's just a true url so it's 100 percent web-based it, it really doesn't matter what right. platform or where you happen to be located up uh, so dumb question uh Anybody who knows me really well knows what I think about my newest uh, toy. Uh, and and I'll, I'll rephrase that. I, I've, I've grown accustomed to it in the past 10 days. I won't say I've grown to love it, but I've grown to hate it a lot less. Mm -hmm. But I, I recently became a member of the iPhone generation. Um, so could I use my iPhone to do this if I was in yeah. a pinch and stuck in somewhere? Correct. Yes, you can. Absolutely. I says no. Oh, maybe that. Oh, there he is, Samsung forever. Yeah, no, I've uh, still my uh, my personal phone is still a Samsung, so uh, you won't uh, you'll pry that out of my cold, dead, bleeding hands. But that <laughs> and I should never say never because you know uh, here I am rocking an iPhone now, and it actually yeah. you, once I learned the basics, it's uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's and, a whole and, different and story. To beat this beat this dead horses of course and that applies over if you want to use a different os on a laptop like a mac or whatever as long as it supports html5 you're golden and safari does so you can absolutely run you know run it on your mac too if you want so what i did in this screenshot here is i was talking about how that whole enable the cloud from your phone so how to do that is the system monitor that I kind of extended a little bit to show you some of the customized layouts you can do here with RCS Cloud. So this is my station RCS Hot AC. Now it's already deployed and online, so you would have an option there to essentially deploy or bring online. And all you do is go to that module, click on that link, takes about a couple seconds, and boom, you're online, just like that. So your logs are already there. Everything is kind of waiting in tow. And all you're doing is essentially enabling the stream to play. And there are some options we have there too for 24 seven playback as well, but that's a much larger conversation for Jeff and myself. 
Cool. And oh, the hotkeys too in the bottom right as well. There's hotkeys there that, of course, on the air for you. Um, they're there as well. Of course, in the Canadian, and we were talking about this before, the half deaf Canadian, what I heard was hockey. There's hockey <laughs> down there. I don't know. Uh, no. All right. On that Rangers, note, day. Uh, what, what, okay. Now we had this conversation already. <laughs> At least you're not a Maple Leafs fan. It's, yeah, it's just true. And um, all, the Canadian, all the Canadians in my audience, half of them just left. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then finally here, I like to show this one for engineers because this is the config. This is one of the tabs here. Notice, by the way, a primary player as well as a hot spare. So if you had a secondary encoder that you wanted to attach, not through us per se, but a secondary encoder, uh, we can put that on there. So for a primary and a hot spare or two different output locations, that's here for you too. Um, and again, you can see here the output format at the very bottom. That's choosing your bit rate as well. And then, of course, your ice cast output in there, um, just to where you're going to send that destination. So, so I like a, as a visual learner myself, I know for a lot of engineers too, this window really connects with them because you can see exactly what you're doing. I took a one step ahead, actually. I actually turned this one into a client, attach it to my Revma for the content delivery network purposes of that. Um, but otherwise, it's a one to one ratio. And again, what we're talking about here is that ice cast URL. That is your station. That is the stream. Where is that stream going? I mean, if you wanted to, put into it a browser, press play, and take wherever that device is and the output cables to your transmitter, 100%, you can do that, right? It's all about how you want to pre-configure it. And as I said earlier, it's think of it as a health insurance, right? You, you set this up beforehand, before you break your leg, not after you break your leg. And I mean, now uh, this is one of the cool things with this. And uh, now, can you set this? So you're basically you're setting this up as a server at this point with the, with the IceCast. Yes, exactly. And then you're just feeding an IceCast client in the proper format. Uh, yep. And so I could theoretically set my transmitter up and and talking about our transmitter specifically, but I, I'm sure others can do it as well. But I could set it up to accept the IceCast stream, and point to your URL and and just pull it right straight off of the web and just so RJ45 into the transmitter from my network, bang, yep. done. Yep. So, yeah. and I mean, that, uh, yep. you know, that even if you're running conventional and I say conventional, whether you're running MPX, AES, whatever audio, then uh, you could be running that. And if the backhoe cuts your fiber and you got a Wi-Fi bridge or a 5G link to uh, connect backup audio from the cloud, you could be uh, streaming directly to the transmitter with no additional parts required. Yep, exactly so, right. Just so yeah, phone, it's cool like that. Enable. Uh, and by the way, one of so, the things that I haven't talked about too, by the way, notice in the left-hand side, all those stations, um, uh -huh. RCS Cloud like Zeta is an enterprise solution. So we take your Zeta server, however stations are in that server and we replicate that in the cloud. So you can see there's a whole bunch of formats in there, all operating individually, but part of the same RCS Cloud and one of the enhancements that we're going to do also, by the way, in case you're a current RCS cloud user, is we are developing right now the ability to have a, uh, think of an administrative account. So if I have, let's say, 13 markets, and I want to see all my 13 RCS cloud instances, we're building that right now as we speak. Yeah. Uh, Mr. So that, Sigler, so you're going to yeah, say, you were about to, I saw you were getting ready to uh, say something. What, what do you got? I was going to elaborate on exactly what Nate said. You know, a, a worthy concept to learn to take away from this is that DR isn't really, uh, best thought of maybe as a station level thing. It's more of a site level thing. You are actually DRing your site into the Amazon cloud. And underneath that site are certainly many stations, possibly, you know, assuming you have several stations. And so you can play all those out, but the backup that is provided uh, by, via the cloud DR service is not only, you know, it, it's, it's not only a station or whatever, it, it's your entire database typically. And with that said, you can use that, and we haven't really gotten here yet, is to restore at the ground level. So because we have a copy of your entire database, we can then send it back down to you, audio, metadata, everything, users, information, back down to rebuild, you know, whatever got destroyed at the ground level. Yeah, yeah. And think, think that that's awesome. Yeah, restoring that database, you know, if you have the cryptoware attack, uh, and right. you, by the way, made a great point, Jeff, earlier that, you know, we hear the big headlines there, but it's a lot more frequent than you realize. There are stations in there. So you, it's always things that one engineer who's, oh, it's not me. We're too small. No, that's not the case. 
Um, and so what you can do when you're restoring the database environment is just think about it. You can, you know, unplug the machines, enable the clouds. Now you got your bills paid. Go back to your local terrestrial environment, wipe the computers completely clean. They do something like create a little subdomain or just the Zeta automation environment by itself. You then restore those, uh, those backups on there, restore the audio. And all of a sudden, look how quickly we're getting back up and running here versus the, again, I said earlier, the assessing the situation because we have this already in place five minutes after a cryptoware attack's been identified we're getting the system back online that's what we're doing here we're not trying to frantically figure out what the next step is going to be we're getting our system back online well and i want to uh throw a shout out to the folks over at kqed out in the west coast uh they got hit by ransomware in 2016 um I want to thank them profusely because they've done an amazing job of being very open and public about the, the whole recovery process. Mm -hmm. And you can Google KQED and ransomware and uh, find several articles about what they went through. But it was many, many, many months and many, if it wasn't millions of dollars, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars of lost, uh, lost revenue and uh, lost equipment, just cost. So, uh, you know, if, if you look at that, and I mean, they're a station. Now, granted, they're a huge station. I mean, they're a really big organization, but we're not talking like a group or a cluster of 50 or 100 stations. We're talking one station. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, there is no too small. I mean, I've got a little mom and pop, got an AM, an FM, and a translator, and they got nailed by ransomware. Yeah. So it's happening and like I say, those are the ones that don't make the news, the little onesie yeah. twosies. But there are, I mean, I'm aware of dozens of them. So, yeah. yeah, we're not talking. I mean, I didn't take all of last month to talk about IT and security and stuff just because I thought it'd be a whole lot of fun. I'm the guy that got out of uh, <laughs> service, so I didn't have to deal with this stuff. And uh, here we are. So, Mr. Ziegler, the question I had for you. And uh, I mean, we're running five minutes to the top of the hour. Historic, we will get talking. We'll go a couple of minutes past. So folks, if you do have to bail on us, we will archive this and you can catch it on the on the flip side on the replay. But Jeff, when when somebody comes to you and says, I want to build a Zeta system, what, what are the questions you ask? What do you need to know to properly help people, both for building a system and for recovery? Well, yeah, you're, you're a great question. <laughs> um, really, we kind of need to know the scope of the project. And that is, you know, how many stations do you have underneath your roof? How, you know, are we interconnected with any other facilities? You know, you may own, Nate mentioned like 13 different markets and each market has three or four stations in it. We need to know that stuff in, in architecting the, the Zeta system because there's certainly several ways you can build a system. You can make each system an island. We can tie them all together where they sh just share piecemeal componentry, or we can make it make them act like one huge database. And uh, and each each one you kind of want to go in knowing, okay, well, here's here's the considerations. If I make them all act like one, then guess what? Everybody has to have a unique, you know, universal numbering class, you know, for information to get it, you know, scheduling music, scheduling traffic, all that kind of stuff. Um, once we get to that, once we know those pieces of how big are your sites, what are they going to be doing, we can kind of then help you design um, well, an implementation plan, hey, let's get this installed. Are you providing hardware? Are we providing hardware? And then we kind of like, okay, now let's talk about that, that follow-up and how do we deal with a disaster? And I kind of look at it as a, as a, as a triad uh, architecture where we want to be able to have some amount of disaster resiliency at the site itself. And that anything, you can think of it as raid drives, offline backups, whatever. Um, uh, cloud surface services of super economical backup where you use uh, Zeta D, uh, Cloud DR to uh, uh, back up your database there. And then some stations even go as far as to, listen, I actually want a full copy of all my audio at the transmitter site because that's what I want. And let's face it, there's nothing faster for a restoration than if you have a system with all of your stuff that you can just pick up and take to wherever you need and say, dump and go. Because I, I definitely cannot restore from the cloud that as fast as I can store with a direct connection. But, you know, we've we've countered that too in the sense of when we do download from the cloud, if let's pretend we didn't have the transmitter backup and we just wanted to restore from a cloud, we have an intelligent backup plan so that as songs get scheduled, we'd say, ah, I know I'm going to need this song next hour. 
go get that one now. We prioritize where you know the things we bring back from the cloud. So these are the kind of the, the pieces of information we can contour a backup plan that really best meets the sites in its standalone position as well as part of a of overall uh, group if you are part of an overall group. Cool. To summarize communication. We can't help you. Don't tell us you need it done. Right. And again, it all comes back to the documentation. You know, if yes. you don't know what you've got, it's harder to communicate what you need. Yep. So I'll, I see that uh, I noticed Dan had his uh, hand raised. I'm not sure how long it was raised, but uh, so Mr. Walters, I have uh, unmuted you. If uh, you want to unmute yourself and uh, jump in, then then great. Hey, Dan. Uh, if it was if it was an accidental hand raise, then uh, that that happens as well. So you know, uh, whichever or. But uh, at this point, you are unmuted. So if you uh, hit the little mic mute, then uh, you should be able to add in. Um, while I'm waiting to see on that, uh, Nate, what am I missing? What have we not talked about that you think is important to talk about? I mean, beyond the fact that you're a, a Mets fan. <laughs> <laughs> Most other things. Um, I, I think just the, and, and Rami, if Dan's going to chime in or not, just let me know. I don't want to interrupt step on Dan. Um, I was trying to think just just the the idea here is to help you during times of chaos. That's what this is. So think of the automatic workflow, right? The idea that you have your Zeta system, we're replicating everything internally via Zeta's site replication service. And so you're not doing anything manually there, right? And then of course we have it predestined that destination's pre-planned. So when disaster does strike, we have the flexibility of going through all different types of of portals and just log in, export it, bring it online, there you go. Um, oh, one thing I, I didn't talk about yet is, um, you know, we talked about the, the, I said very early on, but how we had Zeta, Zeta to go, RCS Cloud, and how we're evolving to kind of our clients' needs. Uh, one of the things that we found out was obviously with Zeta to go, you need a VPN, and sometimes there's just scenarios, either a college university, or you have an, um, a town that's off-site, and you still want to give them VPN access to your network. We totally understand and respect that. And so what, one of the things we did early on during COVID is stations who had RCS cloud-based disaster recovery, if they had an empty voice track position, we then sent that voice track back to your Zeta system. So if you had somebody, uh, the case example was somebody had a voice tracking talent in, in Europe, in England, and they just didn't really want to give them VPN access during COVID. And so we said, fine. So we have the two-factor authentication through Okta with RCS Cloud. They gave their own username and password. They were doing middays. And so they just went in via, you know, the, the traditional us.zetacloud.com. And they logged in, had their midday shift, voice track, saved empty voice track. That gets sent back over to your Zeta system. And just like that, you didn't have the need for VPN while maintaining the security of two-factor authentication, which is a really important thing to note. And by the way, I have a video that I just did on voice tracking and stuff on our, our website that we just covered this. So in case you're curious seeing it live, we just did it on Thursday. So, And, and there's the one thing that, uh, so uh, you sent me all the slides. You didn't send me the contact information slide and I forgot to create one. Sorry about ah. that. Uh, but uh, anybody who wants to reach out to either of these guys, certainly you can get them through RCX Works, right? Yeah, RCS, it's just nmumford, rcsworks.com, Jay Ziegler, yep. rcsworks.com. Oh, we have and RCS if that doesn't series. work, you, yeah. you can always reach out to me or info at notl.com and we're Absolutely. more than happy to, uh, to, to put you in touch. So, Mr. Ziegler, last yeah. minute thoughts. What <laughs> critical things have we missed? What, uh, what and, and I mean, we can always pick on Nate for being a Mets fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and, and, and Nate's final edition was a pretty key thing because we don't think about that very often, but it is worthy of thought is when, you know, that ability for, I like to lean on the, the old, uh, I guess, adage of the tail wagging the dog. The fact that Zeta, um, the cloud DR service allows the, um, the content to move backwards to the Zeta system, that becomes kind of important when you look at transitioning back. Because imagine if you just uh, laid your voice track, your four hour shift, six hour shift into Zeta cloud, and now we're gonna switch back over and like, oh, where are your tracks? If they didn't migrate backwards, you now got you now got some stuff to figure out. The fact that that that, that can happen is pretty a nice a nice uh, I guess feature that's uh, I think uh, 
really helps in that transition getting back to normal operation. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, that I think for me, the big takeaway with all of this is that no matter what you do for a backup system, a lot of folks uh, resist cloud-based stuff because, well, somebody else's computer and there is some element of loss of control. But on the other hand, I don't generate my own electricity either. Uh, hmm. Usually, not all oh, around here, at least one day of winter, I can guarantee <laughs> I will be generating my own electricity, but that's a whole different story. Um, the point being that it doesn't necessarily have to be off premise. I mean, you could have a virtualized container, for example, like I was saying before, in the HD multicast in your transmitter or at a dedicated machine at the transmitter site. So yep. you do have some flexibility in implementation. I, I think my big takeaway for all of the, the virtual stuff in general is that all of a sudden location became irrelevant. Mm -hmm. You know, whether right. I'm sitting here in my dungeon in the basement at Casa de Welton, or whether I'm sitting at Nautel, or whether I'm at a hotel somewhere on the road, the webinar can still happen. All I need is a mic and a camera and a, you know, I'm yep. good to go. And more and more, that's becoming the case with audio and video content delivery yeah. in general. And there's uh, there's some really cool stuff, Jeff, that we're going to show at NAB around some of your software and some of the RCS Cloud stuff that I know we slightly teased on. I'll just leave it out there. Um, before I forget, too, by the way, I want to mention, we, I, I, we might have talked with this. We skimmed it and probably didn't give enough emphasis on this. When you are in RCS Cloud, you're offering an RCS Cloud, you can control the on-air product with that on-air module we talked about earlier. You got the hotkeys you can fire, you can voice track, you can go live, you can add assets, you can move the schedule around, you can copy schedules. So the idea is that when we not only are just in disaster recovery mode, we're trying to get you to operating as close to normal as possible. So just in case that wasn't clear enough, you can yeah. start doing all those things still in RCS Cloud. And as I said, there's some really cool stuff you can do uh, coming in the pipeline with some Nautel stuff that we're really excited to show for any day. And I think that's the key to everything is flexibility, um, both for mm. recovery and for continuance of operations. So on that note, we're only five minutes past the hour. That's not bad for only one five. of these sessions. Well, you, we've gone as late as half an hour past, so y'all hey, are man. doing really well. <laughs> Don't say um, that. Jeff and I will start talking about something. Yeah, no, see, I'm I'm watching the attendee attention uh, span, and uh, when it starts to drop, we pull the plug. But uh, this webinar, as with all webinars, is archived or will be archived as soon as, uh, and a uh, quick shout out to uh, Mr. Disembodied Voice himself, Ed Sylvester. He's behind the scenes making all this stuff work. Thank you, Ed. There, oh, look at that. He yeah. even turned the camera on today. Yay. Yeah. Um, so uh, Ed, Ed will have this up and on the uh, website, on the archives, under webinars, and through the YouTube channel, probably sooner than I ever believe possible. Um, Waves mm -hmm. newsletter, I think, I don't remember if we've got a pre-NEB one, will there be one very shortly? And then of course, there's tons and tons of online resources. Uh, I'd like to tell people there's a Facebook group for any topic you could possibly imagine. And some of them actually provide useful information. Um, <laughs> You know, so certainly I think just about every manufacturer's got a Facebook page, plus there are a lot of broadcast engineering groups, lots of educational resources out there, lots of folks who have been there and done that. Don't feel free to reach or feel afraid to reach out to any one of us anytime. On that note, I want to say, okay, I'm watching Nate doing uh, sign language. I'm no, not I sure what reach out to us personally, but I kept doing the wrong, the wrong uh, phrase there. <laughs> On that note, I want to thank uh, Nate Mumford very much for joining us today. And thank you, special Jeff. thanks to Jeff Ziegler. We've never got to do one of these before. This was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. I'd love to do it again. Thanks. Awesome. So, and absolutely, thank you folks for sticking with us. Uh, 60, 70 odd of you stuck through right till the bitter end. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye now.